Since the birth of science fiction, filmmakers have had to get creative with their depictions of weightlessness and space travel. From the early days of Destination Moon in the 1950s up through Stanley Kubrick's 2001, wires were the method of choice. Today, wires can be digitally removed, but in the old days, great pains were made to make the wires disappear into the background, such as painting the wires the same color as the void behind it, or lighting specifically to avoid the wires. Kubrick came up with the idea of hanging the actors on a wire and shooting from below using the actors' bodies to hide the wires. Kubrick, of course, also came up with the famous rotating set to simulate artificial gravity. And Star Wars used the ingenious method of just ignoring it. But nothing sells zero gravity like the real thing, which is why Ron Howard famously shot scenes for Apollo 13 in the NASA KC-135, affectionately known as the Vomit Comet. This flies in steep parabolas to create a weightless experience for roughly 30 seconds at a time. This created some groundbreaking footage that edited seamlessly with the rest of the scene shot on sound stages. But even that pales in comparison to the Russian film Vizov, which translates to The Challenge, in which a doctor has to fly to the International Space Station to perform surgery on a cosmonaut in space. And they did this by actually flying up to the ISS. In October of 2021, director Klim Shapinko and actor Yulia Parasil spent 12 days on the ISS shooting scenes for the film, which should take up about 35 minutes of the film's runtime. Keep an eye out for that to come out in March of this year. At the same time, you've probably heard that NASA will be flying Tom Cruise and director Doug Liman to the ISS to shoot scenes on an unnamed $200 million film, where it's expected he'll actually do a spacewalk. Because, you know, Tom Cruise. For this, they contracted with Axiom Space to build an expandable studio module that'll attach to the ISS. This should happen sometime in 2024. All of this is interesting, maybe even exciting, but the fact of the matter is, pretty soon shooting films in space might become commonplace. Because there's a company that's developing a permanent entertainment studio in space. And a hell of a lot more. The company is called Orbital Reef, and if you haven't heard of it, it involves Blue Origin, Boeing, Sierra Space, and several other companies and institutions. Their goal is to become one of the first in the new generation of commercial space stations after the ISS shuts down around 2030. They were awarded $130 million back in December 2021 through NASA's commercial Low Earth Orbit Development Program, and in August of 2022, they passed a critical system definition review with NASA. This basically affirmed that its planned architecture was sound and that the project could proceed further into the design phase. So yeah, with Artemis kicking into high gear and the ISS on the way out, NASA's basically just handing low Earth orbit over to the private sector while it focuses on deep space. So there's actually several private space stations in the works. I'll get to some of those later in this video and I've covered it actually in a previous video. But first, let's, let's talk about Orbital Reef. According to its website, Orbital Reef will orbit at about 402 kilometers above Earth, and the general idea is for it to be an orbital business park. So just like today, a company might rent office or warehouse space with Orbital Reef, you can lease access to pre-formulated spaces in space. Modules where companies can do microgravity research, technology development, manufacturing products, as well as space tourism, and yes, media and film production. Hence the company's slogan, your address in orbit. From space flight to seeing the Earth from outer space to floating free and weightless, the company will offer flight plans, training, and activities for short or long visits. As CEO of Sierra Space, Tom Weiss said, quote, We are on the doorstep of the most profound industrial revolution in human history, an industrial revolution marked by the transition from the last 60 years of space exploration to a future where humanity extends our factories and cities into space. It isn't totally about tourism. It's about unlocking the next great discoveries using the microgravity factories that we'll build just 250 miles above Earth's surface. Sierra Space claims that these microgravity services and factories could revolutionize every industry and be a major growth contributor to the US and other world economies. And this isn't just hyperbole. There have been a lot of things we discovered over the years that could be manufactured much better in microgravity. Um, biological tissue, for example. Like, we all love the idea of being able to 3D print organs for people who need transplants. Well, a big hurdle to that is that if you start laying down cells in a regular Earth gravity, they kind of just pool together in a kind of a mush, and you can't really take the form that they need them to make. This actually works much, much better in microgravity. So yeah, maybe someday you might be able to get a new liver 3D printed using your own stem cells in space. And, and that's just one example. There's dozens of other applications. So another company that's part of Orbital Reef is everybody's favorite space punching bag, Blue Origin. And look, I, I know I've been a bit spicy about Blue Origin in the past, but I'll be nice today, I promise. Space is hard. But Blue Origin has a big role to play here because if you're gonna build a giant business park in space, you need a heavy lift vehicle that can get all that payload up there. And that's exactly what the new Glenn is designed to do. And this does tie into Blue Origin's overall mission of moving industry off Earth and into space. The question becomes, um, how close are we to New Glenn actually getting off the ground? <sighs> I 
Um, it's been delayed. Um, it was originally scheduled to launch in 2020. Uh, that got pushed to early 2021, then late 2022, and now it's been delayed. Blue Origin is a lot more secretive than, say, SpaceX, so we really don't know how long it's going to be or how far along they are. Um, we've seen a Pathfinder prototype. We've seen a drone ship to land in the ocean that's now been scrapped. The most recent thing we've seen is them testing the fairings in the water at Kennedy Space Center in December 2022. Um, they may be testing to see if they can recover and reuse the fairings like SpaceX does with the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. New Glenn's payload fairings are made from a pricey carbon composite, um, and the whole ship is designed to be as reusable as possible, so it's not out of the question that they want to reuse them too. But it seems like the main holdup with the New Glenn is the development of their BE-4 engines, which uh, the first stage is going to have seven of them. The BE-4 is a massive and powerful engine that'll run on methane and oxygen, just like the SpaceX Raptor engine, and just like the Raptor engine, they're designed to be reusable. But they've run into multiple issues with the engine. First, it wasn't burning as long as it was supposed to. They ran into some issues with the turbo pump. Uh, some high-level team leads left the company. It's just been a cluster. There have been some issues. The hope is that these engines will be ready to get the new Glenn off the ground sometime this year, but as of this recording, the BE-4s are still not flight qualified. In the meantime, Blue Origins continued launching their new Shepard missions using the smaller BE-3 engine, um, except they've actually had to put a hold on those because of um, engine issues. Space is hard. Anyway, the other major partner in Orbital Reef is Sierra Space, who do have some really exciting things happening. Sierra Space is the company behind the Dream Chaser space plane, which I did a video on space planes a while back. I'll put the Leaky poo around here somewhere, but the long and short of it is, it's kind of a miniature space shuttle, and I am a fan. Its first vehicle named Tenacity is set to start running a series of NASA missions to the International Space Station in 2023. And in August, Sierra Space announced that the Dream Chaser will be used for a 2024 cargo mission to transport several life science experiments to the space station for URI, a German space biotech company. Sierra Space will send at least six cargo missions to the space station using the Dream Chaser. These are all uncrewed missions, but the plan is to eventually launch crew up to the ISS and, of course, Orbital Reef. It was actually in the running for the commercial crew contract that went through the Crew Dragon and the Starliner. It didn't get that, but it did get picked up for cargo missions. The ship will lift off from the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station and it'll be able to land on any conventional runway. So one argument for the Dream Chaser that I found really interesting is that if, say, a crew member of the ISS became severely injured or ill, uh, coming back in a vehicle that can land on a conventional runway just anywhere in the world would make it a lot easier for them to get to a hospital once they get on the ground, as opposed to, say, you know, landing in the middle of the ocean and everything that goes along with that. But yeah, the hope is to see Tenacity in its first flights this year, but it's being delayed because it's actually supposed to go up on the new Vulcan Centaur rocket from ULA, and that's been delayed because, again, engine issues. Yeah, they're using a new engine that's still in development. It's called the um, BE-4 engine. It's Blue Origin that's holding it up. It's, it's Blue Origin. Excuse me. Okay, well, to be fair, Blue Origin did just deliver the first two BE-4 engines to ULA uh, just a few months back in October, so maybe we'll see something happen in 2023, hopefully. Is it mean to point out that the original deadline was 2017? I guess COVID didn't help. Anyway, space is hard, space is hard, space is hard. There are some other partners working with Orbital Reef, and they include Arizona State University, Boeing, Genesis Engineering, and Redwire Space. Arizona State University is leading the University Advisory Group, a global consortium of universities for research, advisory services, and public outreach. Boeing is leading the development of the Orbital Reef's Operations and Maintenance and Science Module and Starliner Crew Capsule. Genesis Engineering Solutions is developing the single-person spacecraft for routine operations and tourist excursions. And Redwire Space is leading microgravity research payload development and operations, large deployable structures, and the Orbital Reef Digital Twin. The long and short of it is Orbital Reef is working on an if you build it, they will come model. They're building the facilities and leasing them out to anybody who can use it, basically just giving people a microgravity platform for whatever use case they might have. 
But like I said before, there are other companies that are taking different approaches. Remember that $130 million grant that NASA awarded Orbital Reef? Well, NASA also awarded two other companies developing space stations. They awarded $160 million to Houston-based NanoRex for its StarLab project. NanoRex previously worked with NASA to build the Bishop Airlock, which is currently on the ISS, but StarLab would be an all-in-one, continuously crewed commercial space station for research and commercial industrial work. They plan to launch StarLab in 2027 on a single flight in collaboration with Voyager Space and Lockheed Martin. The station is designed for four astronauts, and it'll have power, volume, and payload capability equal to the ISS, which is kind of huge. It'll also include the George Washington Carver Science Park, which has four operational departments, a biology lab, a plant habitation lab, a physical science and materials research lab, and an open workbench area for researchers and commercial customers. And the hotel company Hilton is also collaborating with Star Lab by helping to make cruise suites less utilitarian and more like extended stay accommodations. By the way, this isn't the first time that Hilton has worked with NanoRacks. Back in 2020, uh, the Doubletree Hotel brand used cookies that were baked in special ovens on ISS, making what Hilton said were the first cookies baked in space. So there's that. Another group that received a NASA grant was Northrop Grumman, who received $125.6 million for a project described as a design that, quote, leverages flight-proven elements such as the Cygnus spacecraft that provides cargo delivery to the International Space Station to provide a base model for extended capabilities including science, tourism, industrial experimentation, and the building of infrastructure beyond initial design. There'll be multiple docking ports allowing for future expansion to support crew habitats, labs, airlocks, and artificial gravity facilities to support various customers. Northrop Space Station will support four permanent crew members at the beginning, expanding to an eight-person crew over time with an operating lifetime of about 15 years. Then of course there's Axiom Space. Uh, they're working on a private space station that'll build on top of the ISS and then detach itself and become its own thing later on. But before they get to that point, they're the ones that are actually gonna build the set for that Tom Cruise movie I was talking about in the beginning. They're doing it in partnership with a British company called Space Entertainment Enterprise, or SEE, and they said in January 2022 that they're building an inflatable module called the SEE-1 specifically for film and video production. They say it'll be six meters across, and when fully expanded, it'll have facilities for film, music, and sporting events. Which sounds to me like somebody's gonna have to come up with a zero-gravity sport. That sounds interesting. As president and chief executive of Axiom Space, Michael Cifredini said, quote, adding a dedicated entertainment venue to Axiom Station's commercial capabilities in the form of SEE-1 will expand the station's utility as a platform for a global user base and highlight the range of opportunities that a new space economy offers. Which is a very corporate way of saying they want to build the first Hollywood studio movie in space. Not to be outdone, Orbital Reef announced this last September at the International Astronomical Conference that they signed a deal with Centerboro Productions to portray the space station in a film called Helios. And the film will be set in 2030, and it tells the story of the spaceship Helios and its crew on an urgent mission to the ISS. In the movie, a solar flare hits the station, and it's up to the astronomer and Air Force general to team up and save humanity. And Orbital Reef will be featured as a critical resource by the Helios crew. Principal photography for that film is planned to begin in 2023, assuming it doesn't get delayed by Blue Origin somehow. I tried. So look, one final thought. Um, for me personally, the real value of this kind of thing, of this of space flight in general, is that it serves as a cauldron for innovation. Um, and that innovation then filters down to the rest of us here on the ground, because in case I didn't mention it, space is hard. It's not just a joke, space is actually very hard. So much of what we take for granted in our daily lives is only made possible because of some innovation that was developed in space. So I'm hopeful that in the coming years, with multiple stations providing research and manufacturing to dozens of companies, we could see a flood of spin-off technologies on a level that we've never seen before. That's exciting. And that can make our lives immeasurably better in the future. But you know what can make your life better now? Today's sponsor, HelloFresh. <laughs> So look, it's the beginning of the year. This is the time when we decide to, you know, redouble our efforts on being better people. We start working on better habits and finding new interests, whether or not you're a resolutions type. And if that's something that you're thinking about right now and food is a part of that, I might humbly suggest you check out HelloFresh. Whether your goal is to eat healthier meals or to become a better cook, or maybe you just got some swank new kitchen gear for Christmas and you wanna give those bad boys a try, HelloFresh can help you with that. They got a variety of meal plans for a variety of family sizes. They've got fit and healthy plans, vegetarian plans, pescatarian plans, which to Ron Swanson is the same thing. Fish for sport only, not for meat. Fish meat is practically a vegetable. And you can order between two and six recipes each week. They send you pre-proportioned ingredients directly from farmers, so it's fresher than you get at the store, and it's less waste. And the recipes are easy to follow, they totally spell it out for you, even a dummy like me can do it, and they taste amazing. Like, seriously, 100% truth here, there are things that I have made from HelloFresh that is like some of the best stuff I've ever eaten in my life. I'm not kidding. And the fact that I actually cooked it myself is just the cherry on top. 
Recipes like golden schnitzel chicken, Tuscan spice shrimp with pesto couscous and more. And each meal is decently proportioned, like I can usually make two meals out of it myself. Which is why it's utterly insane that if you go to HelloFresh.com and use the code JOESCOTT21, you'll get 21 free meals plus free shipping. Like that is so much food. You really have nothing to lose. So just go give it a try. You'll be eating for weeks for free. And who knows, maybe you'll, you'll find a new habit that you'll love. Anyway, it's HelloFresh.com, promo code JOESCOTT21. It's good stuff and it helps support this channel. Links down below. All right, thanks to HelloFresh for supporting this video and a huge shout out to the Answer Files on Patreon and the channel members who are forming an awesome community to helping keep the lights around, on around here. I really can't thank you guys enough. I got some new members to shout out real quick. We've got Tyrone Watson, Jessica Routon, Pill of Thought, Sebastian Fail, Hawk's Eye View, Charles Thibodeau, Kreis Wimmer, Tony and Laws, uh, Cheryl Fulner, Velenin Kovachev, and Mad Penguin. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. If you'd like to join them, uh, get early access to videos, access to exclusive live streams, and get a little cool little avatar next to your uh, name in the comments, makes you stand out a little bit, uh, just hit the little join button down below. T-shirts available at answerswithjoe.com store. If you've been looking at this T-shirt throughout this video and you're like, where the hell can I find that? That's where you can find it. That and many other things. There's there's uh, channel logo stuff that you can use or not if you want to support or whatever. Uh, it all really helps support the channel and they're cool shirts. So again, it's answerswithjoe.com slash store. Go check it out. Please do like and share this video if you liked it. And if this is your first time here, maybe check out this video on um, another space topic. Maybe I'll go back to the space. I'll put the space planes video there. How about that? myself to do that when I upload it. Anyway, go check out the Space Planes video or any others down here on the side if you're watching it on your browser that have my little face in the thumbnail. And if you like it, I do invite you to subscribe. I come back in videos every Monday. All right, that's it for now. You guys go out there, have an eye-opening rest of the week. Happy 2023 to all of you. Stay safe, and I'll see you next Monday. Love you guys. Take care.